This passport is fake. But the scanner at JFK International just turned green. The border agent stamps it, waves the man through. That's because the criminals who made it spent $2 million on equipment and six months perfecting every microscopic detail. They knew exactly what they were doing. From holographic seals created in clean rooms to machine-readable zones calculated by custom algorithms, these aren't your grandfather's counterfeiters, like the McLovin fake ID. They're technical masterminds running industrial-scale operations. Six months earlier, picture walking into what looks like a tech startup, except it's actually a criminal data farm. Rows of high-end computers run 24-7, their screens scrolling through endless lists of names, birth dates, and passport numbers. This isn't your teenager's basement hacking operation. It's an industrial-scale identity harvesting center. But before these criminal masterminds can even touch a printing press, their first order of business is stealing a person's identity, like Sarah, a frequent traveler who receives a convincing email that looks just like an airline update. One click, one quick login, and suddenly her entire travel identity, including her passport details, is for sale on the dark web. The operation starts with what security experts call the breach economy. When hackers penetrate airline databases or government systems, they methodically extract complete identity profiles using SQL injection tools. These are basically digital lockpicks that trick databases into revealing everything. One successful breach at a major airline can yield 500,000 passport numbers overnight. These criminals just don't dump stolen data into the dark web like a digital yard sale. They run it through identity verification software, the same kind banks use to sort and categorize their haul. Think of it as a quality control for stolen identities. Meanwhile, server racks humming in climate-controlled rooms, storing terabytes of stolen personal data. Whiteboards show pricing charts where American identities are categorized and sorted. Premium identities sell for $1,500 each. Government employees with security clearances, that's $5,000. Someone with dual citizenship and a clean credit history might fetch $15,000. The forger shopping for identities uses Tor, the dark web browser that bounces connections through multiple servers worldwide to access encrypted marketplaces. These sites look surprisingly professional, complete with user ratings, Bitcoin payment systems, and customer service. Yes, customer service for criminals. Here is where things get interesting. Because finding the right identity is like finding the perfect puzzle piece. The forger needs someone whose age, gender, and ethnicity roughly matches their client. They use facial recognition software in reverse, finding stolen identities whose legitimate photos could plausibly match their client's appearance. Competition is fierce. With multiple data farms vying for customers, prices fluctuate based on supply and demand. The real tension comes from avoiding law enforcement honeypots, fake marketplaces run by the FBI or Interpol to catch buyers. Paranoid criminals use specialized software to analyze marketplace behavior, looking for patterns that suggest government operation. But stolen data is just ones and zeros. Making it fool a machine requires something else entirely. Converting stolen identity data into a passport that machines will accept is where casual criminals become master forgers. Inside another warehouse, this one in Bangkok, the digital workshop looks more like a software development company than a criminal enterprise. This stolen data is then meticulously encoded into the passport's digital DNA, the Machine Reasonable Zone, or MRZ, that block of text that's at the bottom of the data page. At first glance, it looks like random gibberish, streams of letters, numbers, and less than signs. But this string holds all the key information in a standardized, coded form. The centerpiece is what they call the MRZ Laboratory, banks of computers running custom software that would make Silicon Valley jealous. Because here's the thing about that machine-readable zone that's not random. Every character position has meaning. Every digit connects to others through mathematical relationships. The forgers start by reverse engineering legitimate passports. 
they use industrial scanners, the same ones governments use to extract every detail from real documents. Font sizes measured to fractions of millimeters, color values specified to exact Pantone codes. Even the spacing between characters follows strict ICAO standards that vary by country. Creating the MRZ requires understanding checksum algorithms, mathematical formulas that validate data integrity. Think of it like those check digits on credit cards, except far more complex. The passport number, birth date, and expiration date all feed into formulas that generate specific check digits. Get one calculation wrong, and airport scanners immediately flag the document. Programming the checksum generators is where one wrong bit in the code equals instant detection. If a forger changes a birth date but skips the checksum update, the system catches the mismatch. Generating a fake MRZ that passes checksum validation requires specialized software and an understanding of ICAO's strict formatting rules. ICAO stands for the International Civil Aviation Organization, a UN agency that sets global standards for passport design. The software development is surprisingly sophisticated. Forgers write custom programs in Python and C++ that process stolen identity data and output properly formatted MRZs. These aren't downloaded from sketchy websites. They're built in-house, refined over hundreds of test runs, and stress-tested against real-world scanners. Next comes the biometric profile. To match the biometric chip inside a real passport, the forgers need a full suite of identity data, not just name and birth date, but photo resolution, iris diameter, facial symmetry, and even earlobe shape. They use biometric data conversion software to tweak and morph the client's image until it falls inside the envelope of believability for the target nation. Inside rated forgery labs, investigators consistently find custom MRZ generation programs. These sophisticated tools process stolen identity data, outputting mathematically perfect MRZ codes that fool passport readers worldwide. MRZ encoding software, passport template extraction tools, font matching programs for microprinting, and biometric data conversion software form a complete suite. Of course, perfect code means nothing if the physical document screams fake the moment someone touches it. Beyond the MRZ's digital encoding, recreating the physical page demands a masterclass in security design through printing technology. Most elite forgers build entire miniature government printing operations in rented warehouses. We're talking millions of dollars in specialized machinery, operated in surgically clean environments. Inside one such facility on the outskirts of Prague, a converted logistics hub now hums with the rhythm of industrial forgers at work. Workers wear gloves not for hygiene, but to avoid leaving oils that could smudge microtext or holograms. The passport page is printed on a special, primarily cotton-based paper blend, embedded with microscopic colored fibers. These fibers fluoresce under ultraviolet light, scattered randomly throughout the page. If someone scans and prints the page on normal paper, the UV fibers won't appear. Border agents use UV lamps to quickly verify authenticity. Next, the background design features guilloche patterns, intricate interwoven lines creating circular, floral, or geometric shapes. To create these designs, the criminals need specifically made intaglio plates with microscopic precision. The process requires immense force, thick, viscous ink pressed into microscopic grooves under thousands of pounds per square inch. Intaglio printing etches designs into metal plates, creating tiny grooves. It's a deep etching process, forging that distinctive, raised texture you feel on genuine passports. But getting this process done is just half of the printing battle. Real passports also use optically variable inks, meaning the color changes based on angle and light source. To mimic this, forgers use pigment labs equipped with spectrophotometers to test reflectivity down to the nanometer. The printing itself happens on 2400 DPI industrial inkjet systems, modified commercial printers that cost more than a Lamborghini. Part of the reason why these printers are so expensive is because they can do things your home HP printer can only dream of. 
The passport lettering is made from microprinting, extremely small text embedded within designs or borders. To the naked eye, it looks like a thin line or a texture, but under magnification, the microtext reveals official information or slogans. Replicating microprinting requires printing resolutions and equipment far beyond consumer grade. But this is far from the only security feature they have to get around. Hologram production happens in a clean room, a literal bunny suit clean room. Dust is the enemy here. One speck under a holographic laminate can create a bubble or blur that ruins the entire passport. They use laser interferometry to etch diffraction patterns into transparent foil, creating those shimmering holographic seals that dance under angled light. Finally, the page is sealed under a transparent laminate, but even the glue matters here. Too strong and it seeps into the paper fibers. Too weak and the laminate peels under heat. A passport isn't just a document, it's a tactile experience. Border agents are trained to pick up on the tiniest anomalies. One of these labs might burn through 50 test prints before they get a single passport they're willing to sell. But even with the physical passport printed, there's still one more digital lock to crack. Hidden beneath the surface, the ultimate digital lock lies within your passport, the RFID chip and biometrics. This chip embedded in the cover of most modern passports isn't just a digital ID tag. It's a full-blown encrypted data package that stores the traveler's biometric profile, machine-readable zone, and a digital signature validated by the issuing government. The RFID chip installation and programming represents the final technical hurdle. To install a chip convincingly, the forgers need to embed it into the cover using an RFID insertion tool, basically a heated press that sandwiches the chip and antenna between synthetic layers of the passport booklet. But embedding is the easy part. Programming it, that's the nightmare. Real passports are signed with digital certificates issued by government public key infrastructure. Criminals can't fake the government signature, but what they can do is exploit a gray area. They use clone chips harvested from real blank passports, sometimes encrypted in shipment, other times lifted from inside embassies with corrupt insiders. However, in the most advanced forgery labs, investigators found RFID programming stations creating functional counterfeit chips. These operations somehow obtained legitimate encryption keys, developed biometric data conversion software, and acquired specialized hardware to program blank chips with stolen identity information. Quality control testing with real scanning equipment becomes crucial. Every chip is tested on a government-grade scanner the same model used at international airports. Even if everything works now, a routine security update tomorrow could brick the entire batch. Once a passport passes inspection, it moves to document aging. Fresh passports look suspicious, so forgers use UV ovens to simulate months of sun exposure, hand oils dabbed from real skin to stain the page corners, industrial crimpers to mimic customs stamps, the passports are wrapped in carbon paper to block X-ray scans, sealed in anti-static bags to avoid chip damage, and hidden inside decoy packages, old books, cosmetic kits, vintage VHS tapes. One courier even used a hollowed-out French press. But how are these meticulously crafted fakes detected? Border agents inspect passports by checking multiple layers simultaneously. UV light inspection reveals hidden fibers, inks, and watermarks invisible under normal light. Magnification reveals blur in fake microprinting or guilloche patterns. Holograms are tilted to check the shifting colors and embedded images. Electronic readers test RFID chip presence and authenticity. The MRZ scanner verifies checksum accuracy. Yet, even the most sophisticated criminal enterprises face a downfall. It usually begins with a single mistake, often human rather than technical. Perhaps a corrupt insider gets careless, or a fake passport fails inspection at a high-security border, triggering investigation into its origins. The raids reveal their true scope. Investigators find thousands of completed fake documents, industrial printing equipment worth millions, 
databases with hundreds of thousands of stolen identities and evidence of corruption networks spanning multiple countries and agencies. And that brings us back to JFK. The man in the business suit watches as the border agent swipes his passport again. The scanner hesitates, a flicker of red, then green. The agent stamps the page, hands it back, and waves him through. This is the hidden war waged every day between security experts and counterfeiters. Every new security feature pushes forgers to innovate new theft and forgery techniques. The next time you see a passport, remember you're holding a marvel of technology and craftsmanship designed to protect you, but one that criminals constantly try to crack. Because in this $3.8 billion global cat and mouse game, with 40,000 plus fake passports seized annually at US borders, there's no such thing as perfect. Only good enough to pass for now. Bye for now.